Hey, 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 JK here, and I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me. It's been a crazy two weeks since my last video posting. We've had some work done in the house, getting ready for our second child to be here, uh, and then me getting a new job. So a lot of stuff going on, but I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be posting and getting y'all uh, those updates that hopefully y'all have been looking for for my fantasy teams. Um, because we have week five, week six, and week seven to talk about, I'm going to give very quick, very general updates, let you know uh, the scores of the week, um, just maybe who did well for me, especially over these last three weeks to really a month, um, and then uh, talk about standings, and then of course ads and drops. So uh, we're going to jump right into it with the Cheese Weasels. Uh, week five, I finished with 106.5 points. And I was actually in sixth place. My week five ads were big. Michael Harris Jr., I picked him up. I mean, he was hitting almost 300 last year. He had 20 plus home runs, he had 20 plus stolen bases. I was thinking he is going to be a legitimate star. Well, um, he has not been good. As of this recording, I believe he's hitting like 163. He has like four stolen bases. Uh, so yeah, not good. Another guy I was super excited to pick up was Dalton Varsha. He's one of my favorite players, um, and you know it's not because he's on the Blue Jays because I'm a Yankees fan, but I was so happy when someone dropped him because I mean, he wasn't producing, but he's got catcher and outfield eligibility, which is great. Last year, he had almost 20 stolen bases. I don't look for him to be a high average guy because in the, the few years he's been in the league, he hasn't shown that. But he is in a super high power Toronto Blue Jays offense. He's going to pick it up. He's going to be fine. There were times last year he was up to 250, 260. Um, but I, I feel good about him. I was super excited when I was able to get him. And he's been a mainstay and a fixture in my lineup. I took a look at my stats. And since this is a roto league, it's a rolling stats league. Uh, and I was doing very poorly in home runs, as I've stated before. So I picked up Rowdy Telez. Uh, this guy has helped me a lot. Um, now, you might look at his numbers. I think right now he might be hitting like 250 or something. He's sitting in a pretty good Brewers lineup. Um, I mean, it's not, you know, Carlos Gomez, uh, Christian Yelich in his prime, um, Jonathan Lucroy, but they have some, some decent players. I mean, obviously Yelich is still there, but... Again, I feel good about Telez. He's going to be my first baseman or my utility, whichever one. Um, so I picked him up because I needed home runs and I needed walks as well uh, because, again, that is one of the categories. So super happy about Varsho and also Telez. Still, still hoping that Harris pans out. Obviously, I had to make room for those new guys. So some of the guys that did not pan out on my team, at least not for right now, included one of my favorites, Spencer Steer. I don't really have any buy-in, didn't follow him in the minors, and I'm not a Reds fan, but I just seem to like the guy. Hitting 240 or so, wasn't really doing it for me, but again, he's doing well for being on a Reds team that was not projected to do well. And again, my man crush, Jonathan India, is doing well for me. Um, another guy to drop, Brandon Paft. He had a decent start uh, in one of his four or five starts, but I'm, I'm just not buying into it right now. He could become great. He really could. But just right now, for, for what I need on my team, this wasn't doing it for me. Another guy that you wouldn't think about dropping, Starling Marte. He does have double-digit steals, but when you're only hitting 210, 220, in a lineup that should be a whole heck of a lot better, especially with the polar bear, you know, getting RBIs and, and home runs left and right. Marte's not on the receiving end of being some of those runs he's bringing in. So, unfortunately, I did have to cut him. Uh, also, got rid of Bryson Stott. Seems like I did that at just the right time uh, because he has uh, not done as well over the last few weeks. He uh, is hitting like two seven, high two seventies, two eighties now. Um, I mean, yeah, he'll, he'll still do well in that Phillies lineup that, again, everyone should be doing well. But I just uh, had other needs on my team. We will jump to week six, which I was in fourth place with 105.5 points. Uh, so like I talked about before, the uh, points will fluctuate. So just because I had more points in week five, I was in a lower position. Now I have less points and I'm in a higher position. 
Uh, we're just gonna jump right into the ads and drops. It is a long list this week. Uh, I picked up a lot of pitchers, or at least a lot of pitchers. Desclafani, Will Smith, Giovanni Soto, Clark Schmidt, John Gray, Martin Perez, and Merrill Kelly. And in return, I had to drop Desclafani, Martin Perez, John Gray, Merrill Kelly, Eric Swanson, who I was holding to get me hold, but he decided to blow up on me, um, Luke Rayleigh, and Brandon Marsh. And we're gonna move to week seven where my points decreased big time. I'm down to 96 points. Now I'm sitting in seventh place. Uh, so obviously not what I wanted, but you know, it is what it is. Plenty of time to move on up. Uh, as and drops for this week, we're gonna start with the drops because unfortunately I did have to let go of wisdom. It looked as though he was sitting every third game or as reported on uh, the Yahoo League uh, updates. Um, Oddly enough, um, he did seem to sit quite a bit for me in this last week, so I had to get rid of him. Also got rid of Giovanni Soto because Alvarado did end up going on IL. He should be coming back here soon, so fingers crossed for that. And I had to cut bait with Michael Harris Jr. I gave him two weeks, and he just did not do it for me. Uh, I think in that time, he may have stolen one base, and at this time, he is in a 0 for 22 slump. Ooh, not good. Some of the pickups I had, which were only two, included Jake Berger. Uh, he has been super hot for the White Sox, and you know hopefully he'll be able to help my team. And Matt Liebertor. Uh The Cardinals called him up. He was having a phenomenal year at AAA, uh, and he was able to get the start and did well for me. He ended up picking up the win, so super excited to have him. Uh, and then for some odd reason, the manager, Marmol, used him in relief he gave up two runs and almost ruined the era and whip in one of my other leagues so uh let's keep him in the rotation and not in relief some of the guys that have been doing well for me nate low man he is hitting above 300 he's getting walks he's getting hits uh, he's getting those runs getting on base he's in a really good lineup uh there in texas another guy estuary ruiz man 19 stolen bases in the last three weeks and he's hitting 280. Holy cow, man. I'm so glad I was able to pick him up in some of my drafts. And then also just pick him up off the waiver wire in others. Pitching-wise, Duvall has gotten me 11 saves. And Estevez has gotten me 10. On the not-so-good side, Trey Turner has been a disappointment not only for the Phillies, but fantasy owners who took him probably in the first round. In the last month, he has one stolen base, four RBIs, and he's hitting like 210. These almost 50 games for the Phillies are not going well, but let's be real. It's Trey Turner. He's had a phenomenal career already. He's going to turn it around. We just have to wait and hope it's sooner than later. And for goodness sakes, please watch your waiver wire to see if any silly person drops him. Or better yet, try to go out and bow low on him. Pitching wise on the not so good, Pablo Lopez has a 5 plus ERA. Hopefully they're just bumps in the road. He's on a talented Twins team. They have some run support, so I think he'll be fine. And a few weeks ago, I hyped up Joe Musgrove coming back for me. He is one and two in his return and has a six plus ERA. Next, let's move to fan tracks and look at my funky junkie Joker monkeys. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to present to you someone who has now won two out of three weeks in this league. In week five, I was able to win 467 to 249. Some of the biggest contributors to my win in week five were Dalton Varsho, Ronald Acuna, and Estuary Ruiz. All getting at least 39 points with Varsho and Acuna getting 50. Moving on to week six, I was back in the loss column. 456 to 345. Um, my biggest contributor that week was Nolan Arenado with 47 points. But moving to week seven, uh, as much as my pitchers wanted to make sure it was close, much closer than it needed to be, I did pull out the win 483 to 442. Main contributors this week all got me at least 42 points, and that included Merrill Kelly, who had a gem of a start, Ron Rocuna, of course, Nolan Gorman, and Nolan Arenado. Ooh, the cards are heating up. I didn't forget about ads and drops these last three weeks, but it was very minimal, and I was able to pick up Lourdes Goriel Jr. and drop Joey Gallo. 
That was the only add or drop I made over these last three weeks in that league, and it seems to be paying off. With the two wins over these last three weeks, I've jumped from 12th out of 12 to 9th out of 12. So, don't call it to come back, but I'm cooking with fire now. Moving on over to my Kent Murphy Dingers, it was another two and one three week span. In week five, I was able to pick up the win six to four. And listen to this, the only reason I picked up that win was because the other guy inexplicably decided to start Graham Ashcraft and Martin Perez. They both got blown up and I was able to win both ERA and WHIP. I definitely should not have won that week. He was sitting at a pristine ERA and pristine whip. And that 40 plus ERA by Ashcraft, and I think like the almost 20 ERA for Martin Perez, just opened the door for me. And again, I was able to capitalize. Some of the guys that helped me this week, Matt Olson, Jonathan India, and Ian Happ each had two home runs for me. Ruiz only had three stolen bases, which was a slow week for him as of now. And I was able to get two saves from Phillips and a win and a save from Estevez. The adds and drops for this week did focus a lot on pitching because again, I was figuring if I was going to lose ERA and whip, I needed to make sure I won strikes, saves, and wins. So some of the guys I picked up included Nathan Navaldi, Drew Smiley, Belak from Houston, Mason Miller from the Athletics, Unfortunately, I did have to cut bait with a few guys that I really had grown to like, including Austin Hayes, which I know he's hitting 300 on a pretty good Orioles team, so I might pick him up again. Uh, Spencer Steer, Brandon Pfaft. I always like saying his name. And G. Wan Bay. Man, G. Wan Bay just can't get it together. He's got a ton of stolen bases, I think 14, but he's either not playing or can't get on base. So. Uh, watch me, you know, in the next few weeks, see him jump up to like 20 or 30 stolen bases. And of course, he's not on my team, so unfortunate. I was able to make a trade, though. I threw out a few, but there was one guy that bit. Now, I'm going to talk you through this trade. Because some people might think, why did you make that trade? Why did you pick up those particular people? Why did you trade away that particular person? So, Bryson Stott. As I said before, he was on an upper trajectory, but I knew he wasn't going to be able to keep it up. So I packaged him along with Ahmed Rosario. Now before you start to say, what the, oh my gosh, he did so good last year. He was barely hitting like 220 at the time. Now he might be hitting 247. He had like a four for four night that raises average super high. Um, but he's not doing what I need him to do. Granted, he did have shortstop and outfield eligibility, but I packaged uh, Stott, who was second base and shortstop eligible, along with Rosario, shortstop and outfield eligible, for Jeff McNeil, second base and outfield eligible, also the hitting champ from last year, and Giovanni Gallagos. Now, why do I want Gallagos? He's not the closer in St. Louis. Hosley seems to have a pretty good hold on the position, but Halsey's going to need some time off, especially if St. Louis keeps winning. I've always had Gallagos on my team in holds leagues, so I know he has K potential, but also the ability to keep ERA and whip low. So that's why I want him. And I think he's going to be able to salvage some wins here and there. And of course, you know, like I said before, uh, pick up some saves when Halsley needs some time off. Week 6 presented a loss for me. But man, I am so mad because I was trying to get cute. The only reason I lost, 4-5 to five, by the way, was because I decided not to play a few pitchers. Including Logan Webb and Hunter Brown. Who, Brown got the win and Logan Webb kept some, some runs off the board. So he did lower the ERA. But I already had a great looking ERA of whip. I didn't want to screw that up. Well, I ended up playing myself, as DJ Khaled would say, and I ended up losing the wins. Um, so I wasn't able to tie that, so he did pick up the freaking win. I'm so mad at myself, but you live and you learn. Some guys that did well for me, and I just seemed to crap away their performances, including Nolan Arenado with three home runs and eight RBIs, and Adolis Garcia with six RBIs. Evaldi pitched a gem for me, almost going a, a complete game, and I got two saves each from Phillips, Gallagos, who I traded for, and Estevez. And I still lost. Some of the ads I had for this week include a guy that I drafted and then released because he wasn't doing well, Joey Manessis. 
I was also able to pick up Clay Holmes. Someone released him right after Boone came out and said, no, he's not the closer anymore. Mike King took over. Uh, he's going through some tough times, I have some runs here and there. So I was able to pick him up because again, he has K potential. He will keep ERA and whip low eventually. And again, he's gonna salvage some wins and salvage some saves. And finally, if you look back to my Kent Murphy Dinger uh, draft recap, you'll see that I made a trade giving away someone, a pitcher, one of the best pitchers in the league, for Jose Altuve. They were both fourth round pickups. If you remember who it was, go ahead and comment. Don't go back and look. Well, please go back and do look and watch the video. That'd be great. But if you remember, you're thinking, holy cow, I have Jose Altuve and Brandon Woodruff. That's right. Brandon Woodruff is going to be coming back eventually, and I'm going to have him. I'm going to have a phenomenal pitching staff because, again, remember, I do also have Tristan McKenzie, who had a rehab start this past weekend. I am so excited about my pitching rotation. Some of the guys I had to cut loose included Mason Miller, who ended up going on the IR, Obelak from Houston, and Brett Beatty. I really hope it doesn't come back and bite me in the butt like the Josh Outman release did. And this past week, week seven, I was able to pick up the win six to three. My hitting was 300 plus throughout the week, which was phenomenal. Some of the guys that really helped me out, Nolan Arenado, another three home run, eight RBI performance. Adolis Garcia with four home runs and seven RBIs. Ezekiel Duran, who was a pickup for me this week, with two home runs and Estuary Ruiz with two stolen bases. Again, another slow week, but he's putting in some work with like 20 up to this point, which is great. Pitching wise, I was able to get gems from Hunter Brown and Logan Webb, although I didn't get to pick up a win. And Clay Holmes picked him up a win and a save. So seemed like a pretty good pickup for me in the last week, huh? Speaking of ads and drops, I did pick up Ezekiel Duran. He's been on fire for the Rangers, so that yes, if you look at my roster, that is three Rangers I have on my team. Duran, Garcia, and Nate Lowe. Hopefully, they don't hit a cold spot altogether and just tank my team. Um, I also picked up Matt Liebertor, who again, pitched well for me, got me a win, and kept my ERA and went pretty low. I did have to release a few guys, including Trevor Story, who I had held and held and held. Uh, he did start hitting, but there's still no timetable for his return. They're saying about mid-year. But again, looking at my team, my second baseman include Jose Altuve, John Hanindia, Jeff McNeil, and Ezekiel Duran. I have way too many second basemen. Tried to trade them away. No one was biting, but... Maybe I'll be able to pick him up later if something happens to those other two. I also regret dropping Drew Smiley. I didn't think he was going to have a good matchup with the Houston Astros, but he ended up doing pretty well. I think he had eight strikeouts, uh, 1.5 ERA, sub one whip. Did pick up the win, but man, should have kept him. My Kent Murphy Dingers are sitting at fifth overall out of the 10 teams and third in my division. So my four and three record should be five and two, but I played myself. Isn't too bad. We still have lots of baseball left. Jumping on over to my ESPN leagues, Russell My Gym Jams is up first. In week five, I took the L nine categories to five categories to two categories. I did pick up Harold Ramirez, Domingo Germain, and Josh Winkowski. Now you might be thinking, who's Josh Winkowski? And why did you pick him up? Well, he has relief pitcher and starting pitcher eligibility, so I can move him around in my lineup when I have other starters or other relievers I want to play. He can pick up some wins because he's a long relief guy. He also picks up holds with those long relief innings and can record some saves. The drops for this week included Whit Merrifield, Domingo Germain, Spencer Steer, and Andrew Benintendi. Week 6 I actually won the categories 7-5-4. to five to four. My ads and drops were heavily favored towards pitching as I elected to pick up Clark Schmidt, Martin Perez, John Gray, and JP France. To make room, I decided to release Daniel Bard, who has not picked up a save, so he's not taking Pierce Johnson's spot. Uh, Clark Schmidt, Matt Brash, who was a previous Josh Winkowski placeholder with dual eligibility as a starter and a reliever, and finally Josh Rojas. And week 10 was a blowout. I lost 10 categories to four categories to two categories. The ads for this week include three fielders and three pitchers. King, Belak, and Garrett, and Duran, Suzuki, and Fraley. 
The drops included Marinaccio from the Yankees, Martin Perez, John Gray, Starling Marte, Ahmed Rosario, and Brandon Marsh. Right now I'm sitting at 40 wins, 55 losses, and 17 ties, and 8th overall in the league. And the last league I'm going to talk about is the South Harmon Institute of Technology. Week 5 ended up being an L, 8 categories to 6 categories to 4 categories. And some of the pickups for that week included Domingo Germain, Tyler Wells, who's been a big surprise and who's been doing very well, Eric Swanson, who I picked up for holds, and Matt Mervis, who was called up by the Cubs. However, I talked him up and I also released Tyler Wells. I decided to drop Miguel Vargas, uh, Domingo Germain, and Spencer Steer. One of my favorites, unfortunately. Week six was another categorical loss. Eight categories to seven categories to three categories. I picked up JP France, Will Smith, and I added Austin Hayes back to my team. I ended up releasing Starling Marte, Matt Mervis, and AJ Mentor, so hopefully they can't hurt me anymore. Week seven, I actually pulled out a win. Eight categories to seven categories to three categories. Going into the weekend, I was down by a significant amount of categories. I uh, made a few moves and came out with a win, so it was pretty awesome. The adds and drops included adding Matt Liebertor and Alec Manoa and dropping uh, Geraldo Perdomo and JP France. So I'm currently sitting in uh, fourth in my division uh, with a record of 52 wins, 53 losses, and 21 ties. And that record leaves me four games behind the leader in my division. So plenty of time, plenty of opportunity to come back and regain that top spot. No segment on who to watch or who to pick up, but this is JK. And I want to thank you for sharing part of your day with me.